everybody, and welcome to Church Online. We are so excited that you tuned in today because God has something so special for you. If it is your first time tuning in, you are our VIP guest. So please text the word VIP to 912-244-8447 so that we can keep you connected with all God is doing here at Free Point Church. Please like and share this message because it could be the very thing, the very word that God has to transform your life and someone else's. So prepare your hearts for what God has today. Well, today, uh, let's go to John chapter 6 real briefly. John chapter 6, let's start with verse 43. John chapter 6, verse 43. The Bible says here, Jesus therefore answered and said to them, Do not murmur among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. And I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets And they shall all be taught by God. Therefore, everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except he who is from God. He has seen the Father. Most surely I say to you, he who believes in me has what? That's good news. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which comes down from heaven, that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh, which I shall give for the life of the world. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word today. Father, I ask that your word would be planted deep within our hearts today as the incorruptible seed that it is, and that it will bring forth your fruit. It will bring forth fruit that 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 bears, produces life for us and for those that you lead us to. We love your word. We embrace your word. And Lord, we make the commitment today not to just be hearers of your word, but to leave out here and to be doers. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. But today, I just wanted to uh, uh, take time and read this um, because uh, Jesus here is uh, explaining to the disciples, those who's listening. And by the way, at this time, there's, there's thousands and thousands of people that are, that are sitting, sitting, excuse me, I don't know how why that come out like that, but they're sitting at the feet of Jesus because he just multiplied the uh, five loaves of bread and the two fish. You know, he took the little boy's sack lunch and he multiplied the food and he gave it to the disciples and they gave it out and they were able to feed thousands of people with just five loaves of bread and two fish and then had leftovers. That's the God we serve. It doesn't matter what you have in your life, whether you see it as much or you see it as little. When you put it in God's hands, little becomes much. Your gift becomes more than enough. Your talent becomes more than enough. The money that God's put in your hands becomes more than enough. Your knowledge, understanding, wisdom becomes more than enough. This church, no matter how, how big in number, we're big in impact because we put ourselves in the hands of God. Try to be led to the Spirit of God. Little becomes much in God's hands. Amen. And... The cool thing is we get to decide whether we put it in his hands or not. And it's, but his hands are always outstretched and open. Waiting for us to put our lives in his hands. Amen. So Jesus multiplies the five loaves of bread, the two fish. And then he sat down and he starts having a conversation with them. And he tells them, he says, um, he, says uh, he starts revealing who he is. He said, I just fed you physical food. But I want you to know, greater than the, the, the bread that, that came down from heaven, the manna that your fathers ate, they ate of it and still died, greater than the, the bread and the fish that I multiplied and, and you ate of it till you were full and had leftovers. There's one standing before you that's greater than all that. 
And he identifies himself as the bread that came down from heaven. And, and, and he tells them, he says, if any person comes to him and eats of him, they'll never hunger again. If any person comes to him and drinks of him, they'll never thirst again. Jesus told the lady at Samaritan's well in the Gospel of John chapter 4. He told her, he said, if you, if you, if you, when you drink of me, I'm, I'm going to give you water that springs up from everlasting life. And the water I give, those who drink of it, will never thirst again. What's that water he was talking about? He was talking about himself. He was talking about the life of God, the spirit of God that he was offering that lady. And she put her faith in Jesus that, uh, that instance. And then she went and led a whole town to salvation and led a whole town to Jesus. Jesus is telling this multitude, uh, these multitude of people the same thing that he was telling the lady. Listen, I am your answer. Like, you don't have to look to another person. You don't have to look to another source. You don't have to have it all figured out yourself. You don't have to be strong enough. You don't have to. Come to me. Come to me. Eat of me. Drink of me. And when you do, you'll find out that I am good and that I am more than enough for you. My power is more than enough. My provision of love, my provision of relationship, my provision of, of peace, my provision of joy. It's more than enough. And God wants you to eat of Him and drink of Him in a way to where, it's over, to where it, you overflow with His goodness. You overflow with His life. You can eat of God to the point and drink of Jesus to the point where it's overwhelming. Where you can't help but to spill, over onto, spill uh, Him over onto someone else's life. You can drink of Him and eat of Him uh, to the point to where He becomes in you this fire. And you can't help yourself, but you have to tell somebody about who he is and what he's done for your life. Hallelujah. He is more than enough. Look at you never say he's more than enough this morning. (laughs) Jesus. Jesus. I remember the first time I drunk of Jesus at 15 years old. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I couldn't wait to get home to tell my parents about how God had changed my life. About how He had healed me. About how He delivered me from fear and depression. And how that dark cloud that was hanging over my head was gone. I couldn't wait. Then I couldn't wait to get to school to tell everybody. I I became just a, I don't know, a, a waterfall. Just flowing, just, a, just exploding everywhere on everybody. Some people embraced it. Some people rejected it. I'd say few people embraced it. Majority rejected it. Same as it is today. Yeah, hallelujah. But the few that will embrace the goodness of God and will eat of Jesus and drink of Jesus on a daily basis. And the good thing is you don't have to, you, 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 you don't have to wait till Sunday morning or Wednesday night. You can, you can go to this word right here. Jesus was the word that became flesh and dwelt among men. He said, the bread that came down to heaven is my flesh. He says, those who eat of my flesh will never hunger again. What is he talking about? Is he, is he want you to turn into a, 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 a cannibalist? How do you pronounce that? <laughs> no, that's not what he's talking about. When you eat his word, you are eating his flesh. And this word is spirit. This word is life. This word is living. That's why Jesus said, I am the living bread. I'm the living word. When you can get up every morning and digest this word, and it will become in you, spirit. It will become in you, life. It will produce life in you, in your mind, will, and emotions. It will bring life into your body. It will drive out cancer cells, coronavirus, (laughs) any sickness or disease. It will drive out depression. It will just, it will become in you a fountain springing up from the everlasting. And it will just push out anything that's not of God. And the goodness of God begin to flow out of you. Where when you go to work, people say, why are you smiling so? I've never seen you smile so big in your life. When you go to the marketplace, people, people come up to you and say, how, why, how are you so happy? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus. A little, my wife used to have a hard time in, um, in high school. Hard time in high school. Because she shines so bright. And she smiled so big. And she was so kind. That she'd have people come up to her and say, that, that kindness uh, 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 can't be real. That smile has to be fake. Nobody can be that happy. But what was it? It was Christ in her. The hope of glory. Jesus, the light of the world, shining out of her. Exposing darkness in other people's lives. What, what, why, why is that? Because God wants them running to the light. Running from the darkness, running into the light. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, it's real. I live with her. Praise God. That's the kindest woman in the world. Kindest woman on the planet. She's so sweet. Thank you, Jesus, for a woman of God. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord, that I'm not like uh, 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 Solomon, who wrote in Proverbs that it's better to dwell on the, in the corner of a rooftop than in the house with a contentious wife or woman. Hallelujah. That's not me. And, and, and if and it's you, brother, don't look next, don't look to the side right now. Just keep looking straight ahead. <laughs> Text me from your, your friend's phone and I'll pray for you. <laughs> Hallelujah. God can turn it. God can change any heart. Amen. <laughs> Moving on. Moving on. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'll never forget, not too long after I got born again, I was, I was probably around 16 years old. I remember going to the bowling alley in my hometown with some friends. And in this bowling alley, they had a bar built into the bowling alley so people would We'd go into the bar, get drinks, or go into, the, it, was, it was a bar slash club. They would go in there and get drinks, and then they would come out, and they would drink your beer and bowl at the same time. That's, that sounds like a recipe for disaster. <laughs> a heavy bowling ball and beer. Whoa. Anyway, <laughs> that explains the balls going south instead of north, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And folks finding themselves uh, head first halfway down the lane somehow. That explains it. Anyway. <laughs> so, but I remember as a, uh, as a teenager, just giving my life to Jesus, baptizing the Holy Spirit. Walking in there. And I remember one night particular, particularly that I went in there and, and my heart was just burning big time as I, I would see people go in there and get beer and uh, uh, you know, hurting their body, smoking cigarettes, and, and young people going in there, you know, or adults going there getting beer and then giving it to the, the young folks. And my heart was just so burning. I, and it, to the point that I remember sitting on, on one of the stools, facing the lane with tears flowing down my face, and telling God what, what really what was happening, the Holy Spirit was in, um, interceding through me. But I remember praying for them. And, and, and telling God, God, if they only knew how much you love them, if they only knew how wonderful your plan is for their life, if they only knew how powerful your blood is, that your blood could, can wash away any sin, any sin stain, and could absolutely demolish any sin or stronghold in their life. If they, if they only knew how good you were, if they only knew they'd run to you and eat of you and drink of you and would never touch that stuff again. And then I, I remember going to school the next day and sitting at lunch table with, with friends that I, I played baseball with. and They talk about going to uh, the party on the weekend, on Friday night. Talk about how many kegs they got at the party. and Talking about the girls that they were going to sleep with. And, and I remember sitting at that table and just, my, I was grieved in my spirit because if they only knew how valuable they were, if they only knew that God built their body to, be, to carry His presence and His glory, if they only knew 
that sin is fun for a season, but in the end it brings forth death. If they only knew that this was all a tactic of the Satan to steal, kill, and destroy their lives and their futures. If they only knew how much God loved them, then they would turn to Jesus, put their faith in Him, drink of Him, and they'd never thirst or hunger for anything else again in their life. And I would sit down and I would tell, they would invite me and I would, I would tell them kindly, my, Jesus has changed my life. I don't belong to the devil anymore. I love you. I'm not going to the party with you. And for some reason, the next week, they sat at a whole nother table. And I found myself, just me, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, enjoying my chicken nuggets and my sweet tea. <laughs> but how, it was all right with me. How, nothing's changed at 35. <laughs> Hallelujah. Only, only other thing, some, my, my, my wife and my child are right there, you know, and sometimes a few other people hang on. Thank you, Jesus. But not, not everybody. You know, Jesus, I'm coming to a close here. I'm not, I'm not going to be one of them preachers that lie. I said it wouldn't be long, but the definition of long is different for everybody, huh? <laughs> hey, come on, Jesus. Amen. To me, you know, watching golf, five minutes is a long time. You know what I'm saying? You throw soccer into it, three minutes, it's over. That's been a, that's a full day. Anyway. All right. So, but Jesus, when he got to the end of his message here, if, you, if we were to continue to read, all those thousands of people that were following him because he met their physical need, which he, he fed them because they were hungry, all those folks, when he started talking about eating his flesh and drinking his blood, they all got up and left. Every one of them. I'm talking, you're talking about somewhere around 13, 14,000 people? All of them getting up and leaving except for his original 12 disciples. I mean, that's going from mega church to small group in an instance. <laughs> you better be confident in, in who you are in God because most preachers would quit. And, and, go, and go get a, a secular job, right? And they say, I'm a failure. That's it. I know how we'll recover from this. But Jesus, Jesus, because he knew who he was, he knew that he was pleasing God, he knew that he was fulfilling the will of God, didn't need the approval of any man, whether if men accepted him, whether if men rejected him, he still spoke the truth in love. Sounds a lot like all of our ministers today. I, I was being sarcastic because that's not how it is in a lot, a lot of places. But it's turning in Jesus' name. Yeah. Amen. It's turning. But they all got up and left. And Jesus, man, he, he was so just awesome. So bold. He, look, he looked at, up at his disciples and he said, Hey, are y'all going to go too? Meaning that the truth doesn't change. The Word of God doesn't change. This right here is the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. Heaven and earth will pass away. But the Word of God will stand forever. The, the flower fades and the grass withers away. But God's Word stands forever. Hallelujah. And whether men accept it, whether men reject it, whether men accept some portions and then rips out other portions because it doesn't fit with the lifestyle they want to live. This is the truth. It's the absolute truth. It is the word of the living God. It is Jesus himself. It is the bread that came down from heaven. And the, the man, woman, boy or girl who eats of this, who drinks of this, who puts their faith in Jesus, who yields to his lordship, makes him lord of their life, they will have everlasting life they'll never hunger again they'll never thirst again hallelujah and so Peter was wise enough he understood that he looked at Jesus and said Jesus yeah what you said well I'm paraphrasing this I'm sure what he was thinking yeah what you said is a hard thing to comprehend but we trust you 
Have you ever had that response? God, what you're asking me to do is a very, very hard thing. And I don't understand. And the closest people to me don't understand. But I'm going to obey because you alone have the words to everlasting life. That's what he said. Hey, I don't understand, but you alone. I know one thing. I've seen the blind see, the dead be raised back to life again. You read my mail. You, you love me unconditionally. You're the Christ, the Son of the living God. You alone. Wherever you go, whatever you say, whether these guys follow you or not, I'm following you, Jesus. Amen. Let me ask you today. Jesus is asking us the same. In a society that we live in that where, people, where the majority is calling evil good and good evil. In a society where, the, where lawlessness abounds. In a society where when you stand for truth, you will be persecuted, mocked, criticized by many. Jesus is asking you the same question. Will you go with the majority? Will you too leave? Or will you stand with him? Will you serve him? Will you allow him to be Lord? Will you eat of him? Will you drink of him? And will you allow him to live through you to bring salvation to other people's lives? Will you stand to your feet today? I am so glad that you tuned in to the message today. I pray that God's word produces much fruit in your life. You know, God is doing amazing things through this church and I would love for you to prayerfully consider getting involved. You can go to our website freepointchurch.community and see all the amazing opportunities to get involved with what God is doing here at Free Point Church. Also on our website there is a form for prayer requests. We would love to pray with you, pray for you concerning the desires of your heart. If you would like to get involved here at Free Point by giving financially, you can do that as well on our website. We are excited about God's beautiful plan for your life and look forward to connecting with you again at our next online service. God bless you.